So I'll start by just, you know, introducing myself. I'm Vinicius. I'm originally from Brazil. And I'm now also like you with my last two months ahead of me to finish my PhD. So good luck for us. And I'll be, I'm going to be talking about the PhD, you know, the invention that we put together into my PhD, which is the multiplex lab. And then the title as follows. I don't I only have five minutes, so it's going to be dynamic, OK? So you know, we all like these beautiful systems. You know, they're, they've been established for a long time. You know, they are well known. They, they work, right? But you know, there is problems, right? I mean, they, they, they don't have a lot of flexibility. They usually need a lot of personnel, a lot of manpower, even like electrical power, because these are huge installations, huge facilities that sometimes take a lot of room, like you know, some of these examples. So you know, looking at all these you know these limitations, this you know thing thing being stationary, it needing a lot of maintenance, we wanted to come up with something different, right? So we set out to create something that we believe it's going to solve some of these issues. You know, something that's cost effective, it's modular, user friendly, so you can just jump into the machine and everything is intuitive, it's self-explanatory. You don't have to even go through a manual. And of course, you know, we have to also achieve or at least try to achieve a high throughput, you know, platform. And not only that, but something that all the high throughput systems have always failed is to also give you high resolution, as well as a large field of view and lots of samples that you can auto automate you know, the whole procedure. So that's, that's the goal of the work. So I'll introduce you the Multiplex Lab. It's a system that emerged from a simple imaging setup that you see on the left. It's a, basically a very small form factor system that you can hold. It's, meant, it's made out of a carousel that is 3D printed. We have a camera axis there that is coupled with a multi-axis uh, setup in which you can basically scan a large area. We develop HCB in-house so we can you know, control the whole system. And here you can see the, the models that we have in deep learning, the CNET model, the rootnet model, able to track this oxygen mutant root tips and come up with quantitative measurements of root growth rates and germination indexes. This is just a, a view of, uh, of the entire system. Here we could quickly see that pin 2 oxy one had a very similar growth to pin 2, indicating that pin 2 is, is uh, ecstatic to oxygen one you know, very quickly to able to, to see that. And then uh, we also you know, can have uh, the integration of the root development in time, as you saw in that part of the animation. It, it's a very lightweight system that you can easily move around the lab. So you know that's the advantage of having something that you, I mean we travel with it actually, and then just some uh, footage showing this being used in the lab. This is the latest uh, setups we have here. Alex testing the heating elements so we can heat up the plates as well, as well as lighten them with multi multi channel multi frequencies. Just a bit of the plating. I mean we're doing this manually at the moment, but in the future hopefully to automate that process. We can operate the machine. I can use it right from here. I can actually connect to it and operate it from here. Professor Ikram there, we're discussing some of the future of the case. We, we test this everywhere. We even put inside of a bio chamber. So it's very rapid. You know, it doesn't need special treatment. You can really treat it, you know, like as a biologist. <laughs> so here is just some, uh, some of the tomatoes that we looked at in early germination to see the germination uh, beginning. Also, late, later stages at branching. If you look at two weeks, you can start seeing branchings in our abduxes. But we also look at some crops, uh, you know, some interesting species that we usually don't really care much about in terms of imaging them. This is actually a desert species called southern apple, uh, Procera. So yeah, probably no one has ever looked at this before. Here we're actually trying to test the, the fogging system, so we don't have condensation on that shot, we, which was by cooling the pet in the petri dish with these peltier elements that we have, which ended up causing some abiotic stress with cold. But of course now we have it dialed up. So we're in the phase test where we can make sure that all these factors are, are controlled. And all of this emerged from the initial prototype we had in pretty much the first year of my PhD where I employed this high resolution sensor. It's a 50 megapixel sensor that we removed the low pass filter. So it's emitting at the full spectrum, meaning infrared, UV, UV and and visible range. Resolution means that you can see the root tip. That was a regeneration study we did. We can also see soil organisms here. This is by looking at a huge field of view and then zooming in because we have this high resolution imagery technology that allows us to do that. So you're looking at nematodes, which are so tiny, but we can still image them. And these are trips. 
fading off roots, which is very unusual. And then we coined a, a new techno, a new technique, which is by you know like scanning the surface, and because we have a very shallow depth of field in our optical system, we can we can create a, prof, a profile with the root profilometry technique. So we can look at you know like heat stress and then whatever the shape deformations happen to your roots, you can sort of measure that just by taking advantage of a shallow depth of field, which is usually not a benefit. It's usually a, a, a problem we have to, to work with. But yeah, taking advantage of that. So this is you know some of the videos that I had, so I can do it in five minutes. Because <laughs> if you let me talk, I will talk forever. So the video at least keeps me in check. <laughs> so just to summarize what we just saw here in a very quick <laughs> rant, it's a it's a mobile CNC system. It's just a concept of a CNC system, and you strap a microscope in that, so it gives you a multi <coughs> field of views. Like you can zoom in, you can pan around, you can stitch. So you can it's almost like an unlimited resolution because you can really go in, but it scan the whole surface. And then the one of the last implementations now that we're doing, which is to implement this heating and cooling system that will allow us to do abiotic stresses, also eliminate condensation in petrolysis with agar. And then we also have the irrigation system. So for our soil plates, on the back of those plates, there is a nozzle, so you can feed in water or even other solutions with other other compounds that you might may want to test. So you know, basically in a nutshell, we can look at germination <coughs> frequency, we can look at root growth traits, plant morpho 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 morphogenesis, and also look at some seed batch you know, assessment. So you can see if your seed batch is good. Some of the visitors we had in our lab, they were asking, like, oh, I want to see if this seed batch will germinate in October or what? It's another, another season. Can I simulate the temperature and the conditions there? Yes, we can. So this is, you know, gives people the ability to force you know, conditions that they want to see how their seeds perform. And yeah, that's uh, pretty much. I would like to acknowledge the very important uh, collaboration that we had with Alex, which is an electric engineer, basically integrating the hardware and software parts. The uh, Ali John, which was the guy behind the machine learning models we had, you know, and then of course people in my team that were expressing the system, testing with their own samples, and, and really like trying to break it. And of course, the most importantly, Professor Ikram Bilou, which has the vision, you know, and, and allowed me and gave me the freedom to explore all this unusual, I would say, in some cases, some unusual directions. Me being an industrial engineer, you know, I always try to bring in something new to the field. So if you want more information, you can visit us in booth number 16. But one thing, our luggage got lost. So because I, was, I brought the whole robot with us, it packs inside of the suitcase, which is nice. But uh, I don't know, this airport here now, you guys are struggling or something, I don't know. You need to employ people maybe? <laughs> and talking about employing people, we're actually looking to employ some people. So if you're an engineer or if you know any engineer that is interested to you know, move to this field and help us, you know, biologists and, and, and engineers that are trying to merge technology to, you know, to make things happen for us at this point, integrating the latest technology, we're looking for some engineers. So feel free to email me and thank you very much. I think I did it in six.